Okay, this is my third time recording this. Let's go. Okay, so in this video, I'm going to talk about the what I like to call the basic theory of CGW, which is so just very similar to my basic theory of defending, in that I think that there are certain factors that create different like uh, play styles of teams, and these different play styles all counter each other, or they uh, work to balance each other out. Um, and I'm just going to explain them now. So first of all, let's create a graph. So I think there is like a range of different play styles within these two graphs, which is uh, low tempo and high tempo. And then there's, um, uh, what, what did I call it again? Positional control and uh, game state control. So these go hand in hand, but they aren't necessarily the exact same as you would know if you watched my last video. So if you don't understand the difference between these two, please watch my last video. And if you, if you still don't understand, feel free to ask me questions. Um, yeah. So I think there are three different types of, this is the middle of the bar, by the way, three different types of uh, play styles. And I'm just going to talk about them, talk about their strengths, weaknesses, and how they work, how they counter each other. Okay, so one is control. And this is a very straightforward play style that's been around since the beginning of time. And basically, it's somewhere around there. Um, controls, controls, characteristics are uh taking control or like how a control team works is they take one part of the map and they decide this is going to be the place we hold for the entire map match and we're going to use it to push we're going to use it to defend we're going to use it as our sort of uh main space of rotation right and um teams that play control tend to be teams who focus on team fighting and uh working as a group rather than setting up individuals. And that's what, um, I mean, that makes sense, right? So they play a very slow game at the beginning, they take a lot of positional control, and they use that to swing the game state control in their favor in the long term, okay? And this kind of, this kind of, uh, an example of a team like this would be currently Ram Ranch. They play very, they play as a very, they play very group heavy, they take a lot of team fights, they don't like to solo offend, and they like to take a part of the map and slowly uh, swing the game into their favor. Uh, if you looked at the, if you remember the tempo graph I made in my last video, you should refer to that when it comes to like how they play and whatever. Second type is what I like to call aggro, but it could really be, yeah, let's just call it aggro. So aggro teams are characterized as being similar to control, but not exactly the same, rather than focusing on holding a part of the map forever and making sure they use that map, uh, that part of the map for their advantage, they're focused more on taking control of something and snowballing off of it, okay? So with control, it would be more like setting up a lot of infrastructure and making sure people can't push past you, whereas aggro is more like, oh, okay, we got this like one by one bridge over, let's go, let's go, let's go, like six man push, go, 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 we just swipe them, right? It's very snowball-y and it's focused, it's very, it's more swingy, right? Because like in some time, in some senses, you'll have more tempo than other teams, but in some senses you'll have less tempo than other teams, okay? And this looks a little bit like this. Like, aggro teams are still focused on taking a part of the map for themselves and then pushing off of it, um, just not as much as control teams are, and they don't need as many conditions to in make ensure that their push succeeds, right? They don't mind if their pushes don't, if their pushes fail. Last type of team is what I like to call rush. Um, I used to call it unorthodox, but I call it Rush now, and Rush is essentially a type of team that focuses on very high tempo, very game state swingy plays. They don't care about the fact that um, a team might have control of the map, or they, and they don't care about the fact that a team might be winning because it's so easy for teams to make a big mistake and for them to swing the fa map back into their favor. So they don't focus on chokes, they focus on getting to the objective, whether that's as a team, whether that's as individuals, and yeah, so they look something like this, okay? They don't care about positional control as much as they care about game state or game state control and they play very quickly, okay? 
So, in my opinion, this is like a triangle. I think that control beats aggro, I would say 70% of the time. Control, uh, it's a very, it's very, right now I think control beats aggro 70% of the time. I don't think that aggro teams can set up the infrastructure and the space they need to be able to be effective in pushing, and, and control teams can, first of all, take away their control, take away the aggro's point of offense, and also just play team fight and play defensively effectively enough to stop and stem aggro teams. I think that aggro teams tend to beat rush teams, and I think the split is a lot closer. It's more like 55 to 60 percent, probably 55 percent. Um, aggro teams tend to tend to work as a group more often than rush teams, and because they play quick enough, they can take advantage of rush teams' misplays or mispositions. So like if a rush team decides to send four people right, and the aggro team realizes this, they might just rotate all their team o players over and just push the wall themselves. So it ends up becoming like a sort of race to see who can get in and out, and a race of individual plays, which is why I think rush can still win a lot of the time, but definitely they're not favored because aggro teams can play that um, play style where they still catch up to rush teams, whereas um, control teams can't. And that's why I think uh, rush beats control teams, I would say probably about 60% of the time. Um, again, like this is all very volatile, like teams that do better might, I mean teams that have better players will do better, teams that have worse players will do worse, teams that have players who are not on their game during a match will play worse, etc. Right? I think rush teams, and I explained this a lot in my last video, uh, rush teams can force control teams to play their game and uh, will and basically play not to lose rather than to win, um, which is a term I know a lot of players like to use, but I, I don't love that term. I'm just using it to like help people understand. When a rush team starts pushing and they're all over your front line and they're all the, like they're pushing both your wolves, last thing a control team will do is be like, okay guys, let's push as well, because they require cause control teams tend not to be that great at offense. They tend to be focused on team fighting. And because of that, they can be stalled for a long amount of time because you know when control teams are going to make their pushes, right? So as a rush team, you can just like send one or two players over to their side, bow them, stall them. They won't win the fight, but at least they'll stall them long enough for your teammates to be able to get in and out of the war room. So because control teams recognize that they won't be able to win trades and, and they focus on taking parts of the map away where at, so rush teams either can't run back or they focus on um, playing defensively, right? And the problem with playing defense, playing problem with playing defensively is that on a lot of the maps, um, or and I'll talk about this in a future video. A lot of the maps, when you trade on your front line, you don't actually win the front line, um, or when you trade on your side, you don't actually win the front line. So you can't stop rush teams from pushing your wall again. And some maps are large enough that you can get away with tunneling and solo offense and waiting teams out, right? And because you can get away with that, uh, rush teams tend to just outmaneuver control teams and control teams end up like devolving into utter chaos and not having control of anything because they're too busy defending their war room okay so those are kind of the strengths and weaknesses generically um and <clears throat> so i'm going to talk about specifically uh so now i'm going to move into a different segment i'm going to talk about why i think rush rush is the best way to play the game and why i think it's or why teams should start favoring this kind of play style rather than the team-based play style. So throughout time, most teams have played control and aggro variants, and teams that are have been the best have tend to be a, be a mix of the two. So like for example, uh, Ram Ranch might be good at control, Impact was always good at both control and aggro, uh, Punishers you, was always used to be good at both rush and aggro, and um, teams that were not so good but still like well-known that never really had like a like a winning performance in CTW or TDM were teams that only focused on one purely like dopamine only was a control team they didn't do anything else um, and uh, what other teams am I thinking of like Lungla was very much a control team most teams just were control and they were just bad at it um, bad at everything else sorry and because of that they were never able to out pivot teams that adjust their play style to match theirs <coughs> whereas um, <coughs> Punishers recognize that the way we outpace a team that's way better than us at melee is we just go around them, right? And they did that on next gen. They did that on, on SSB. I'm not really talking about uh, DTC, but it were it, the same logic applies. And 
the way Impact was like, oh, okay, they're going to try to push. We're going to take away all their ability to push by playing this very controlled game, making sure they never have, making sure to choke them out, make sure they never have the space to be able to make the plays they want, right? So if, if we're going by the spectrum and recognize that this is like a bar graph, like it's not just one specific part, I would say aggro goes anywhere around this middle area and rush goes anywhere around this side area and control goes anywhere around this lower area of the bar, right? And what's it's important to realize that teams can adjust their play style and teams that are good, especially nowadays. I think the team play is way better now, especially among the top teams than it ever was in um, in the past. But um, and games tend to be really stressful now, right? And the reason they end up being like that is because it's the decisions within the game that make the biggest difference, not necessarily how you start the game or how or how you um, <clears throat> how you plan to play the game out, right? So. Control has is a very strong. So, what I'll posit to you is that the two ends of the spectrum are much better than anything in the middle. But the thing that in the middle is what players find most comforting and most easy to understand, right? So when I think of aggro teams, I'm gonna start from the in and then go out. So I think that aggro teams tend to be teams that are pretty like decent at melee. They know how to team fight because they've been playing a team for a long time, and they know when it's good to push and when it's good to not push, right? Oh, we got a pick. Let's push. Oh, they're in a bad position. Let's push, right? And but they don't really go, they don't they're not really good at either the things on the outside, right? So teams that tend to be good at very, teams that tend to be very aggro heavy tend to not have the communication or the patience to play a control game, and they tend not to be uh, uh have like the individual game sense beyond like a leader shot calling them to be able to play the rush strategy. So aggro teams tend to I'm not saying aggro teams are bad or they're dumb or anything. I'm just saying that they have different strengths and weaknesses. Aggro teams are just good at like, oh, this is the part of the map we need. Let's go. Let's snowball off of it. Oh, let's get picks. Like it's the very most basic, correct way to play. But when it gets exploited, it's really easy to exploit because you can always play slower than them and beat them, or you can play faster than them and beat them. And that's why, um, since there's so much more range in what you can do to be able to outpace them, it's, um, it, that's why they're not like necessarily the best play style. Control, on the other hand, is a lot slower and it's a lot more effective because you know what's gonna happen every single time. You just go to the front line, you wait for a pick to happen, and you take your 70, 75% chance of getting into the room with your five man push, right? It's a very slow play style and it favors players who are not necessarily like the most uh, gifted at offense and more to, like leaning towards team fighting and like having to be led by a player. Um, teams like Ram Ranch tend to be really good team fighting and they don't, don't tend to be very good at offense, especially individually. Um, and, bec and because of that, they prefer, and since they don't really understand, a lot of their players don't really understand the mechanics of CTW, they tend to focus on doing the things that they know how to do well, and they tend to do it slowly so everyone can keep up with their pace on their team, right? So they're really good at that. And um, when, they're, when you're really good at that, you can just play this linear, very, uh, very, uh, what's the word? Uh, oppressive yet uh, very straightforward play style that is very hard to maneuver around when the map is designed in a way where you have to f uh, take these like big group fights um, on these small choke points but also in a way that um, but their biggest weakness or the biggest strength in that linear gameplay that's very straightforward is also their biggest weakness which is why rush teams can out maneuver them right um, now moving on to rush teams rush teams tend to be the teams with a lot of like teams that tend to pull wins out of nowhere like literally when they're fucking losing and they're capped down they're capping a touchdown they just manage to win it and the reason they manage to do that is because rush teams tend to be sort of uh, uh what's the word i'm looking for they tend to force teams to make mistakes because they play at such a high tempo but they have the game sense and understanding of the game enough to be able to punish teams that make those mistakes, right? So aggro teams, a lot of time, when you play really aggressively, you 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 push them back to their front line, or you push them back to their wall room, and or you get a pick and you sweep their front line, and they're like, okay, guys, let's go for the wall, right? But in a situation where you can't get those picks to be able to work around it, that's where aggro teams struggle, that transition phase. And this is where rush teams don't struggle, because they just play aggressively enough to force teams to make mistakes. So like, um, I'm gonna be biased, by the way. I'm I'm a co-leader or like leader of adventure club, whatever. And um, and I'm gonna like disclaimer. I think my team's really good. 
and I like my team a lot. So uh, I might be biased in their favor. Uh, if you don't like that, uh, you don't have to watch the video. Anyways, so like rush teams, what and I would consider Adventure Club a rush team. I would consider Shrew an aggro team, and I would consider Ram Ranch a control team. And what rush teams tend to be good at is playing to a playing a pace that punishes mistakes. So the automatic default for teams that play that play to punish mistakes is either a try to outpace them or b try to not make mistakes. Right? It's really hard to not make mistakes when the other team's goal is literally to force you to make mistakes and misposition yourself and over rotate players. And it's really hard to play that way, especially when you have players that are inexperienced or new to the game, or even even more so with players that have played a lot because they internalize bad habits, right? So that's why it's really hard to play against Rush, and it's really hard to punish Rush teams for doing well. What punish what you can do to punish Rush teams is that since they tend to overcommit to fights and um, they send like a player tunneling, they do even splits to uh, make to make up for the fact that. Um, uh, they probably won't win team fights, or they don't plan on winning team fights. And when they manage to do this, they, they, or when they do this, they tend to leave a side open. Or and that's when you can overcommit to a side, and do the same thing that they're doing to you, except do it to a much more uh, less aggressive extent and play a lot more controlling. If you can manage to split yourselves in a way that en ends up, or manage to split your front line in a way that counters the aggressive side of a rush team then you're really countering the entire team because their defensive side doesn't usually tend to play super um, play super forward so um, and honestly like I haven't really figured out a best way to counter rush teams I think that player like team rush teams just tend to be like very uh, very individually talented players that just know how to work together and that's why it's really hard to transition from an aggro team to a rush team or a control team to a rush team but it's very easy for a team like my team, Adventure Club, to transition to a control game plan against teams that will struggle against control. So, like for example, against Shrew, I don't imagine we're gonna be all over, um, all over their front line, like individually offending, like we did with uh, Ram Ranch in the se second round of the Invitational. I imagine we'll play a lot slower play style because we know we can beat them that way, and it's a lot safer, right? That doesn't mean we won't offend. It just means we're gonna do it a lot less than we did against Ram Ranch. Whereas it's really hard. But it's really easy to play that control play style because it's not that difficult to do it compared to uh, playing like, okay, guys, we're going to six man rush and like just do what you got to do. Make sure you don't get killed. Right. Like there's no real there's there's much less strategy and it's more about positioning yourself and setting up your teammates to succeed rather than um, uh, being like carried by an individual player on your team. Right. Anyways, so. Yeah. That's it. Thank you for watching. Have a great day. Um, see you in the next video. Goodbye.